and how they can improve as the year goes along as well. Abiyomi Iola jumps at center circle against Zion Williamson. Marquis Sumner controls it, nearly pickpocketed. There's the tip forward from Bolden. Barrett through contact, lays it in for the game's first two. Filtering four around the outside. Three-pointer is pure for Cam Reddish. Talked about his talent many of times, but he is battling with confidence to a bit. But he's also playing with two other alpha males. The first time he's really had to play with this level of talent. What Stetson has shown early, Jones the miss, and Williamson is stripped as he tried to go back up and score where he likes to, right in front of the basket. And if you're Corey Williams, you like the start from your team right now. There's been no back down in Stetson. Firm believer that every team has to have a go-getter. And that's who R.J. Barrett is for this team. And you see, he goes up and gets the lob from Trey Jones. Barrett. He's going to soar, and then he'll score. Jones to Barrett. I have no problem with his field goal attempts, especially with his teammates continuing to give him the basketball as they do. Stetson's leading scorer, Christian Jones. Columbia, South Carolina gives the Hatters a one-point lead. Barrett into the lane. Hop and a slam for Javin Deloria. The game, Trey Young only took 19. Well, and only took 19. That's still a lot of shots, but you also have to think about the fact that Trey Young for shots, and many of those shots don't lead to runouts and long rebounds for opposing teams. The shots have been falling early for the Hatters. That drops for Eola. Were and if he decided to play football and didn't go to Clemson and chose Alabama, <laughs> oh, that would not be pretty. Zion gets two with the left hand. Up to R.J. Barrett, he just gets his hands on so many basketballs and gains possessions for Duke. In some ways, that's almost indefensible. Doesn't shoot a lot of threes, and you know, and that's the area where, of course, he's going to be able to improve as a basketball player. But there's nothing you have to do with his offensive rebounding and his ability to score in the paint. We welcome those of you just joining us here to Durham, North Carolina, inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. It's Duke with the lead on the run. Javin Deloria gets another Blue Devils dunk, and it's a timeout. Off of the offensive glass, but this is where Duke has improved. Defensively, turning defense into offense. When Marquise Bolden shot the three, they were ready to celebrate the big fella knocking down one. Goldwire goes coast to coast. One of college basketball's most impressive streaks, 142 straight non-conference home games. Doesn't look to be in doubt so far. It's a steal and two for Jordan Goldwire. This is the Duke team, honestly, Mike, that I played against. So when you talk about the defensive pressure and getting out into the passing lanes and how disruptive they are, these are the type of Duke teams that I got used to. Really impressive rejection from Marquise Bolden underneath the basket as Stetson's scoreless drought extends past four minutes. And he gets rewarded at the other end. On the drive, Bolden soaring in again, but a little bit too late. Kenny Aninye. Barrett's got his parents in attendance today watching courtside. He goes all the way. I don't know how he finished that one. Three years ago, and he's trying to find a way to get his team back to that level. Dangerous territory for Zion. And an opportunity really to go out and see if he can win a national championship with this group. Well, it helps when you've got the number one player, R.J. Barrett, also for the third straight year. Number three. And I believe Trey was number nine, number ten, somewhere in that area. They continue to cause havoc defensively. And I can tell you right now, Keith Matthews, the sophomore from Blythewood, South Carolina, rejected by White. On the break, Delorier has his third dunk of the night. Duke has made ten straight buckets. He's had that ability, but because of his high-flying antics, everyone thinks he's just a dunker, but he's so much more as a player. As Cam Reddish. Off of him, the light stays green. But look how far Duke has Stetson extended on offense because they get out and pressure the ball. And you have to make individual plays as they're able to do there. That Eola basket ends a 15-0 run for Duke. O'Connell finger rolls from outside the lane. This will be a day and a game that the members of this Hatters squad certainly never forget. Some players looking down at their phones, others using it as a window to the world to record their first time 
coming into Cameron Indoor Stadium. They won't forget it for a variety of reasons. with the opportunity to be able to come and play in the United States. You know, R.J. Barrett played at Montverde Academy. You see so many different guys coming down now and playing high school basketball in the state. In international basketball, they would be able to strongly compete with the USA, such as R.J.'s team did when they won the U-19 gold medal. You get to see a guy like Iggy Brasdakis or Lugans Dort, who's been really sharp for Bobby Hurley at Arizona. And Dort played on the Adidas, you know, travel team. Skills on display for Bobby Hurley out of Arizona State. And you look at R.J. Barrett's numbers, and Dort's not far off, averaging over 22 points a game as well. Going defensively, it only gives you really the sense that this team is going to get better as the season goes along. Williamson with the easy flush at the basket now has 13. Then gets a deflection and knocks the basketball out of bounds, allowing Duke to set their defense. You know, and it's that type of effort we're talking about. Here's Williamson, another inside-out dribble. Wow, that hang time, something else. Just take off from wherever and be able to finish, putting points on the board before Stetson can even get their defense set. The effort, though, we saw last time down the floor from Reddish. 63-27, Duke at 6-1, number three in the country. Saw the only team they've lost to, Gonzaga, get challenged earlier today. That's a compliment. And he's the one guy, in my opinion, that can really go get his own shot without having the help of his teammates. You see this time, he's along. But you see his ability to grab the rebound. And just like Zion Wilson, he can go full court. But I tell you right now, the ball moves faster with the pass than it does with the dribble. 11 dunks, Zion makes it a dozen. Those are the dangerous passes that Duke so often has taken away from the opposition. There's Jones getting into the defense. And making it 73-29. Barrett continues to pour it in between R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson with the rebound. They're the only pair of major conference teammates to each average at least 20. He's lost six times. Which is the reason I'll be tuned in to watch that game. <laughs> it's 4 Eastern tomorrow right here on ESPN2. Duke started four freshmen and Grayson Allen. But Alex O'Connell really was their sixth man and gave them heavy minutes and gained a tremendous amount of experience that will come into play. At 17. Here's O'Connell, a corner try. Delorier right there, up through contact, counted and one. It's only about being the best team that they can be early March when they play in their conference tournament, seeing if they can get a bid to the NCAA tournament. Raleigh with the reverse lay-in. My equine experience is not enough to say whether that's true, but he certainly is fast getting down the floor. And how about that? Frankovic needs a shot. He turns it over. Habayomi Iola gets hit from behind. And it's a clean block from Delorier. The season. You are up 60. They held IU to 33% shooting in the first half. Here's another three-point try from Justin Robinson, who had two points on the season. He was born up my rookie year in San Antonio, so I said, okay, Dave, you, thank you for naming your son after me. <laughs> he didn't laugh. He didn't find it as funny as I did. You know, but great basketball player, but one of the best people you will ever meet. 14-year career, ended in 03, and he's in the Hall of Fame with a couple of championships to go along with it. Alexander with you here as the number three team in the country. Is on its way to seven and one. Backdoor cut was nice. So was the finish for Christian Jones. When of course, they played against each other, coached against each other, but they became great friends once Jimmy V started working for ESPN. They, you know, Coach K struggled his first three years at Duke, and it, it was Jimmy V who was, you know, not too far up the road in Raleigh at that point at NC State, who won a national championship in 1983. Have to learn. They're six and one. And they're really young. This is one of the, the youngest starting lineups that he's ever played. And another coach in the ACC, 
His fan base apparently not satisfied with a 56-35 win over South Carolina. It, it's at some point, at the moment. His, his alma mater. Right. So, so people in Clemson, and I, and like I said, and I, and I say this to my closest friends and family, with these unrealistic expectations, let's as an ACC keep Dabo Sweeney in our conference. Board centers after Fresno State, Boise State on ESPN and the ESPN app. Robinson, he's got his third triple of the night. Besser wants three. Crowd's ready to go wild for him. From 15 feet, there it is. This Duke program started out with a great November just a year ago with four freshmen in the starting lineup and lost game one in ACC play. And going undefeated in non-conference play because Coach K, was able, Coach K was able to get their attention. Robinson with a Zion-like finish. Oh, and we got the Admiral standing up, baby. The first time he hit the three, it was a, ah, it was okay, but now the full smile, you know he's having a good time. One thirteen forty nine.